All right, so this next video in the series on MySQL is going to be all about constraints and foreign keys. Now, I'm going to be creating two new tables here. These are not already part of the database. So I'm going to create a table called races and another one called characters. Inside the races table, there's going to be two columns, a race ID, which is just going to be an auto increment integer and or a, a tiny int because I don't need to have up to uh, 14 million different types of races, tiny int unsigned is going to give me a 255, which is more than enough. So I'm going to do tiny int as the ID and then name, which will be up to 30 characters long. That's all there is to it. So it's just going to be a list of things, uh, dwarves, elves, men, hobbits, stuff like that. Then in the characters table, we're going to have a character ID, which again, it's going to be we can have integer, probably potentially more than 255, so we'll go with the standard integer. Unsigned, we don't need any negative numbers, auto increment. And this is a slightly different syntax than what I've used in the uh, previous video on the create tables. You can just put the word primary key right here along with the column definition instead of putting it on its own at the bottom. So I did that for both race ID and character ID. We've got a character name simple short text field and then a race ID this number is going to refer back to this one right here and in a nutshell that's what a foreign key is it's just defining what the relationship between these two tables is we're saying that whatever number is going to be here needs to also exist inside of here so this is the the races table is going to be the uh, one source of truth for all of the different races. So whatever the numbers are, they have to exist inside of here. Then in the characters table, I'm going to be referring to that. So that's the relationship between these two tables. And this is going to be my foreign key. Now I can just write references races right here. And I'm sort of creating a foreign key. I'm defining the fact that these two things are related. But it's not serving any purpose. All it is is just sort of a, a comment on there saying, you know what, there's another table that this thing is connected to. I want to actually do something practical with this. So I'm going to turn it into a foreign key constraint. And what that means is if I try to delete something from here, if I delete one of the races, but it's being used in this table, my SQL is going to stop me. It's going to say, no, 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 you can't do that. It's in use. Or if I try to change one of these numbers, let's say I've got something with the ID 7 and I change it to the ID 42. Well, in that case, what I want to do is I want to come into this table, the characters table, look for all those number 7s and update them automatically to a 42 without having to search for them and do the work myself. My SQL is going to take care of that for me. And that's the power of having a foreign key constraint. You're protecting your data. You're protecting your database. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, first thing is, if you're going to have a foreign key, you really should put an index on this. So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to add an index to that race ID, and we'll give it a name. Let's call it um, IDX race. And that is going to reference our race ID column. Okay, so we have created an index on this column right here. Now that we've done that, now if I don't put the index line here, one kind of gets made behind the scenes for us automatically, but I like to be explicit about it. Now I'm going to say I'm going to create a constraint. And the constraint needs to have a name. So I'm going to call it foreign key character race. Good enough. We say that it's going to be a foreign key. This is the type. Now notice I've got commas after this line, this line, this line, this line, but none here because I'm going to have uh, several lines of code for doing this and it's all one thing. I'm just breaking it up to make it a little bit easier to read. So my foreign key is on the race ID column. And we're talking about this one right here, the one that's inside this table that we're creating. So we're creating a foreign key 
on race ID and it references the races table and inside the races table there's a column called race ID. So if this was called, I don't know, race int instead, then down here this would be called race int. But it's a good practice to use the same name. So here it's called race ID and here it's called race ID as well. It just makes it easier for you to understand which is which and where do they refer how they're connected. If you see the two name in two different tables, they should be connected in somehow. It should be a foreign key primary key relationship. All right, so foreign key on race ID, it references the races table, the race ID column from inside that. And then here's the real powerful stuff. On update, we want to cascade. And that means if this one is updated, we want to copy those changes into here. And then additionally, on delete, we're going to restrict. So if something here, if somebody runs a delete command on this, but that number is in use over here, it's going to prevent that. Okay, so there's the whole thing. I'm going to copy and paste this syntax right here into the description for you so you have a copy of that so you don't have to type it all. And we run that. That seems to have worked just fine. Okay, now let's go take a look at those tables. So races, yeah, there's the race ID, race name, primary. Oh, one very thing, very important thing to note. Um, I'm using tinyint here for the race ID. I did mention that already, but when you create a foreign key constraint, you have to have the exact same type and attributes for your field. So if I was dealing with a, a text field, I'd have to have the same type, the same size, and the same collation. If I'm dealing with a number, it has to be the same type, the same size, and the same attributes. If there's any variation between the two tables, it won't work. It will not let you add it. So let's just quickly throw in a couple of um, races here. So we got dwarves, men. We'll insert another row after this. We'll add in hobbits and elves. There we go. So we've got those four added. One, two, three, four. Dwarves, men, hobbits, elves. Great. Now we'll jump over to the characters table and we'll insert a couple rows in there. So Aragorn. And even if you don't remember, because we have defined this primary key, PHP my admin knows that there's a relationship between and it just gives us the list so we can choose it. If we hadn't created that foreign key, we'd have to know the number so we'd have to enter it on our own. So this is a number two and Bilbo is a number three. We'll add two more. So Gimli is a number one and Legolas is a number four. Okay, so now I have four rows over here and four rows in the other one. And these numbers, it's really, really tiny on my screen, so I doubt you can read it, but that says men. And if I mouse over here, it says hobbits, dwarves, and elves. So we do get that connection. PHP my admin picks up the fact that there is this relationship between the tables. It knows about that. So now let's try our update and our delete and see what we get. Okay, I'll clear this off. So if I want to delete from races where race ID equals seven, I know we don't have that, so I'll run it. Yeah, zero rows affected. No problem. So a delete statement in itself does work. But if I come back in here and I say delete where race ID equals two, there we go. Here's the restriction. There's the constraint saying, you're not allowed to do this. That value is in use in that other table. You can't delete race ID two because somebody else is using it. Now let's try an update. 
So we'll say update races set race ID equal to uh, 12, where race ID equals 2. All right, so basically I'm just adding 10 onto the number 2 ID. We'll try and run that. Okay, one row affected. So it said it worked. Let's browse through this. Now we're in the characters table here. We updated race, but it did it. It updated the characters table. And if I jump over to races and I browse through that, number two was changed to number 12. So that was updated. And in characters, number two was updated to number 12. So it works. So that is the whole point behind having these foreign key constraints. They protect your tables, they protect your data, they define the relationship, so some things can happen automatically for you. Great. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave those down in the comments. I will leave a link down below to the full playlist for the MySQL videos. I'll leave a link to the MySQL reference for foreign keys. There's a whole bunch of stuff inside of here. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that and you can start looking at those to see some of the finer details about it. And I will also leave a copy of those two initial create table statements so that you've got those as a reference. All right. Thanks for watching.